I'm just doing a quick self intro. We're kind of kicking them all off the same way. So I'm Kate Lee, Executive Director of Education and Workforce for the South Bend Regional Chamber. And thanking everyone who's in our audience today, our virtual audience for being a part of Manufacturing Days 2021 and attending this session. All attendees are muted, but we still wanna hear from you. So please use the chat function to ask any questions or share comments. This session is scheduled for 30 minutes and we'll be sharing your questions with our speakers. We wanna thank NTMA Michiana chapter, one of our sponsors for Manufacturing Days and their chapter executive, Kelly Kastner will be moderating this conversation. So take it away, Kelly. Thank you, Kate, and thank you to the South Bend Chamber for organizing another uh, successful Manufacturing Days. As Kate uh, expressed, and I wanted to echo her comment, we wanna thank everyone uh, for attending today's session, and also thank you for all the sponsors of Manufacturing Days 2021. Uh, if you haven't had an opportunity, please visit the Manufacturing Days landing page and there you will see a full list of all of the sponsors, educators, and employers who are participating in the event. Um, it's well worth uh, your while to uh, just make a note of who is uh, supporting uh, workforce development and the initiatives to engage with students with careers in manufacturing. Um, as Kate indicated, this session is, is sponsored by the National Tooling and Machining Association, Michiana's chapter. NTMA is a nonprofit trade association that supports, promotes, and advocates for the precision metalworking and manufacturing industries. And us, along with the other sponsors, recognize that manufacturing plays a vital role in our region. And we want to help ensure that you learn about these businesses and the great career opportunities that they have to offer. So we have a great panel ready to tell you more about manufacturing career pathways and the local partners who can help prepare you for those careers. Uh, today, we are fortunate to have speak uh, from Mac Tool Engineering, Johnny Vollmer, who's the Quality Assurance Engineer, and Dan Olis, who is the Lead Manufacturing Engineer. And we're going to learn with them and Paul and Mickey as well about, about their decisions to work at Mac Tool and Engineering. So you can say that in front of your, your uh, supervisors here um, and give us more information about not only their degrees, but their high school experiences that led to deciding to pursue a career in manufacturing. So we want to thank the Mac Tool and Engineering out of South Bend's uh, team for us here today. So we can take an opportunity to introduce yourself and then I'd like to kick us off with a couple of introductory questions. Okay, uh, <laughs> I'm Mickey. I'm the business manager here at Mac Tool. Um, did you want us to talk about how we got here right now? No. Just no. Say who we are. Okay. I'm Mickey. I'm the business manager. I'm Johnny Vollmer. I'm the quality director at Mac Tool. I'm Dan Oles, the manufacturing engineer. Here uh, I'm President Paul Hart's Mac Tool and Engineering. Uh, I've worked here 30 years. Been present the last 13. Wonderful. Well, thank you for the introductions. Um, as I mentioned, we're, we're interested in learning about your experiences and your degree and training uh, and protect and potentially uh, what drew you to uh, interest in this career and then working at Mac Tool. So first of all, maybe uh, John, if you can tell us a little bit uh, how you became interested in this industry overall and what kind of experiences that you had or interests that kind of drew you to get into manufacturing. I have a business degree from the University of Notre Dame. I've been working in the service industry for 10 years or so, and it wasn't very rewarding to me. At the end of the day, there was nothing to really prove that I even existed. Uh, in the manufacturing trade, at the end of the day, there's something that shows that I, I made a difference. I, I actually made something. Uh, I have a, a creative streak and being able to cut metal and, and produce things that have never been made before, it, it, it gets my creative bent out, out, out. It's an outlet. Um, <clears throat> I never really expected to get into the trade. I did take an awful lot of engineering development. I uh, started out uh, as an engineer at Notre Dame. I took six years of math in high school. I took logic classes and I was on the chess team. Um, problem solving, is probably the biggest skill that I learned in high school, uh, logic and mathematics, specifically geometry. You can build anything with a circle and a triangle. Uh, so algebra and geometry were the two biggest things for me in high school. Wonderful. Dan, how about, how about you? What, what kind of experiences or interests did you have 
throughout to your high school that would lead you to this field? So I started out at uh, Adams High School and I was taking drafting and CAD classes. I really enjoyed them. And then uh, in my senior year, I got into a co-op class and they put me into a machine shop at uh, Allied Special Precision, where I started out at. And that's how I got right out of high school because I never really did a job before doing this industry. And I started out learning, running machines, and then, you know, moved my way on up from there. But yeah. Wonderful. Did either one of you know anyone in this trade when you were going through school or did you have any, um, you know, exposure or experiences to the industry? I did not. No. No. Um, it was later in life that I became involved. Yeah. So it's wonderful. We take the opportunity to introduce uh, younger people and, and create those experiences or maybe opportunities to learn more. So tell me a little bit about what you do uh, at Mac Tool and, and what kind of what a typical day would look like for you. I get here before everybody else and I see how we did the day before, uh, look at what sort of feedback we've gotten from customers. I'm one of the few people at Mac Tool who actually interacts with the customers on a regular basis and our suppliers. Uh, so I get in and, and get all my ducks in a row. If we, if we have any issues that have been reported, uh, I, my, one of my major concerns is to communicate with the rest of the staff here, how well or poorly things are going. And if there is an issue, uh, begin to get uh, put together a team to solve whatever problems we may have. So that's how my day kicks off. I usually uh, start out there working with the employees out on the floor helping them solve all their problems that they have out, whether it's machining, loading parts, stuff like that. Um, I do a lot uh, to make good parts, help them produce quality parts, produce parts we can sell, things like that. A lot of uh, technical problems they may have at machine, inside the machines and stuff. Wonderful. Dan, tell me about your first job. What, how old are you and what was your first job and what did you learn from that first job experience My that teaches you today? Okay, so my very first job, I cut grass when I was 16 years old. Uh, mm -hmm. I worked for a lawn and landscaping company. But after that, I was uh, I started working at Allied Special Precision when I was 17 <laughs> doing the co-op class. And I couldn't run a machine yet or doing like that because I wasn't 18 yet. So I was just sweeping floors. I was filling the machines up with coolant, stuff like that. And then as soon as I turned to 18, 18, they put me in the uh, milling department. I started uh, learning how to run uh, Haas machines, three access mills. That's where I started out. Wonderful. How about you, Johnny? What was your first first job and how old are you? And, and what did it teach you that, that you use in your job today? Uh, my first real job was in a plumbing supply warehouse. I learned uh, the importance of hard work and a good work ethic, which is something you take with you for the rest of your life. Right. I also learned uh, I had a goal of getting myself back into school at Notre Dame. I took a year off and I paid for that year of school. So I learned how to budget, how to save money and all those important things that you take with you for the rest of your life as well. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Um, so it sounds like that your first position, uh, it's, it's taken a, a very a different type of uh, pathway to the type of career that you have now. So uh, when it come, when you take a look at your pathway that brought you to this point to where you are in your career and moving forward, where do you see as your opportunity to grow uh, as well as how you got to the position that you are now as far as what type of education or training that you think was, as was pivotal um, to your position and success? Well, MacTool is big on promoting from within. When you look at our management team these days, uh, four of the six of us started out as machinists or in some other portion of the business. And we showed that we were willing to learn. Uh, Paul was willing to train us on the job. And from the 20 some odd years I've been here, I went from being the low man on the totem pole to now being the, the quality director. I still do a little bit of computer programming here and there. I've been known to cut metal on a, on a, a slow day, but uh, from being a machinist, I was able to develop into being the quality director, learning everything that I needed in this shop. Wonderful, how about you, Dan? Yeah, same thing. I started out here just as a regular machinist. Uh, been here now eight years. 
and uh, just kind of moved up into the uh, manufacturing engineer spot where I'm at now to where I'm able to help everyone else out on the floor. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, it's obvious that you become a testimony, and I'm sure there's other team members at Mac Tool as well that can demonstrate uh, the viable career path that they have without um, potentially going to uh, a traditional, you know, four-year college degree, that there's other types of pathways in order to, um, you know, gain success in the field, uh, particularly in an engineering, and there's many different pathways within engineering. So, uh, Paul and Mickey, I don't know if you can share what other types of engineering um, opportunities are available, whether it be at Mac Tool or just in the industry in general that, that students kind of can take in consideration when choosing well, you know, uh, by the time you're a small business, you pretty much you've got accounting people, you've got uh, management people, human resource people. So, you know, we're a small business and we have all the needs, just not of manufacturing skill sets, but, you know, what it takes to run a business. Uh, so it's just kind of a whole gamut of manufacturing of what we need. And we all end up wearing a lot of hats, doing a lot of different things um, on a daily basis. Wonderful. So, um, so what type of products uh, do you make there at Mac Tool Engineering? What types of industries do you serve? Uh, we primarily service the aerospace uh, industry and the medical industry for the aerospace industry. Uh, we make fuel control system parts, landing system parts, um, actuation parts, uh, avionics parts. So in the terms of an airplane, uh, for like an F-35, uh, we make hydraulic manifolds around the Gatlin gun, we make fuel controls that control the engines, uh, the landing systems that bring the, um, the um, uh, wheels up and uh, out of the plane, uh, mechanical, the F-35 is a vertical takeoff plane, uh, so we make the mechanism uh, that turns the engine down and back to allow it to be a vertical takeoff plane. Uh, for medical industry, we primarily do surgical instruments. Uh, so just south of here is kind of used to be at one point in time, the world headquarters of orthopedic implants. Uh, so for that industry, we don't necessarily do the implants, but when they design an implant, they also have to design all the surgical instruments that doctors use to um, incorporate an implant into your body. And that creates a lot of opportunity uh, uh, for surgical instruments. Wonderful. So in other words, you make some really cool stuff. Yes, uh, we, uh, we don't make plates with four holes in them. Uh, what I always tell people that work at Mac Tool when you go to your high school reunion, uh, you know, we make fighter jets here. Uh, we make uh, commercial airliners. Uh, we do surgical instruments. Uh, we do things that you can really take pride in. Uh, we're just not a, you know, like I said, a machine shop that makes a plate with four holes in it. Wonderful. So it seems like the, the level of sophistication of the type of parts that you make and how critical that they are in the planes or in the medical industry that they work with. It seems like it's like it needs to have some great attention to detail and that your all of your employees, engineers and other workers and machinists alike have to pay particular attention to detail. Um, what would be a good starting point for them to for someone interested in, in saying, you know, I really would love to learn more about how I can make cool parts such as this. Uh, how they could get started, um, and what would be key things for them to, uh, to take into consideration on different kinds of classes, perhaps, or maybe what to do uh, right after high school, and what can they expect with regard to the type of work environment or a salary? Nikki? <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, okay, so when you're talking about attention to detail, uh, there's a lot of places you can pick up things like that. For instance, our divert department uses a lot of tools that um, you would get your nails done with. It's literally a Dremel, right? And it does take a whole lot of attention to detail to those things. So if you don't have a lot of experience exactly in the manufacturing, you can look for that in almost any job out there, right? Uh, when it comes to taking classes after um, you get into the engineering, there is the NTMAU, uh, which is online that Mac offers, but there are a lot of cert certificates that you can get um, in a lot of the local community colleges. So it doesn't have to be a four-year college. You can look at math skills, um, like the guys were saying is really important and critical to their job. Um, and there's even just organizational skills that, that can really help with time management uh, which we do consider a really an important soft skill here at Max. So if you're looking to um, just get some skills that might be a little bit outside of the trade, uh, but would help out with it, you can look in those areas. 
Okay. And we, uh, we offer internships. So we have currently have high school uh, students working here. Uh, how many hours a week? A couple. So we started out with um, a gentleman who was with the Lyft internship, which is available here in South Bend. And he was doing during the summer, he was doing 24 hours a week yep. with us. He's but a college he, student. Yep. But he just started back in school. So now he stayed on even after that internship. And he, he's only here about eight hours a week. Um, but we work around his class schedule a little more, a little less, depending on what he's doing with school. Um, uh, also with the Career Academy, we have a gentleman who turned 18 after he started with us. So he's just getting his feet wet. He's uh, working in inspection, learning to use our tools, learning blueprint navigation, which is super important, um, and just kind of learning the ins and outs of the job. So it doesn't have to be on a machine, knowing exactly what you're doing. Uh, those internships really help if you want to get into the industry. Wonderful. It's, it's a way to kind of get your feet wet without you know, completely diving into the pool. Right, exactly. I have to say, having that hands-on practical experience uh, uh, goes a long way for an individual when they're considering a career, um, you know, an, whether it's an engineering career or other type of career uh, in the manufacturing industry. I mean, nothing just beats time just uh, being there. Uh, you can learn a lot virtually and, and looking online and maybe talking to people, uh, but actually having, you know, your presence uh, within a facility and, and spending a little bit of time, um, you know, just holding on to the parts and the tools and, and, and seeing what a day in the life is like, I know that really goes a long way. So, um, but uh, what, what can someone expect with regard to um, investment and in getting into, uh, you know, that the, the, the training for that? And, um, you know, what kind of a schedule can they anticipate having? as far as a work schedule goes and, um, you know, compensation for the type of a salary? Uh, kind of work schedule. Uh, currently we are only working one shift, although traditionally manufacturing works uh, several shifts, two to three shifts a day. Uh, so you, you know, in the industry you should expect that. Um, currently, you know, I'm not sure what minimum wages, I don't think anybody's even close to paying minimum wage as a low end. Uh, traditionally, our low end is sixteen to eighteen dollars an hour. Uh, we max out probably with overtime and everything. People making seventy, eighty grand a year. Uh, uh, probably working forty-five to fifty hours a week to get that, um, and then it goes above that if you become more than just a um, you know a, a production person or a manufacturing engineer uh, at Mac Tool. So you know the the. Um, if you continue to grow as a person for whoever you work for, um, uh, you should expect to always get a raise. Uh, we are not a union shop here. We do not give raises just based off of how long you've worked here. Uh, we give raises based off of um, what you do for the company and what value you add to the company and what you do to help a ship product and people that do more technical things, that take more expertise and have good work ethic, they make more than the people that have less expertise and have lower work ethic. So, yeah. you know, we're big into, because we're not eating, we can pay people, we can reward the people with good habits and good skills. And that's what we do at MacTool. Right. Dan and Johnny, have you, since you've been at MacTool, have you, uh, you know, expanded your skill set? you know, as Paul said, and grown with the company and taken additional classes or achieved any certifications? Uh, I have. I've gone through auditor training uh, as part of, back when I was in production, uh, we uh, wound up getting an aerospace certification uh, in order to get an aerospace uh, 9100 certification. You have to do your own internal auditing uh, prior to being audited by the certifying body. And I was put through training for that uh, roughly 10 years ago. Uh, most of the other training that I've done as of late uh, you can Google anything these days and, and, and take a look at what you're, what you're trying to find out. Um, the one thing that Paul forced me to do uh, in the past eight, 10 years, uh, I've never been a big fan of talking to people, always kind of like to be left alone in my garden to do what I wanted to do. <laughs> and he challenged me to get in front of people and start talking and sharing what I do with other people. So that's one of the things that he's forced me to do uh, to try and better myself and be a, a more well-rounded person. Wonderful. Well, you're doing a great job today. <laughs> How about Just you, Dan? <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing I'm sitting down. 
Uh, yeah, right now I'm really learning on how to like process jobs, go through how they go through the shop. Uh, we're doing, uh, uh, so a lot of that stuff I've never done before. I've just made the part when it came to me, I knew how to make the part, but I didn't, didn't really care what happened to it after it left my area. So now uh, I'm going through learning on how to actually process things, manufacturing, you know, the whole engineering throughout the whole uh, process. Um, that's really what I'm learning right now. Yeah. At wonderful. this point in time, Johnny, uh, uh, Dan, and uh, Mickey are all be, both being are all being challenged to basically help run the company, uh, to take more ownership of what's going on, and uh, uh, really take it to the next level. Wonderful, wonderful. With that said, Dan, what do you what did you what do you know now that you wish you knew in high school? Um. Well, I mean, if I knew exactly what I'm doing right now in high school. I'd be way better off, right? If I knew exactly how to process parts and what's really important. Um, and then if I didn't have to spend 10 years learning it and going to college uh, and getting my associate's degree, because I already knew that, I obviously I'd be better off than I am today. Um, but this is a really important field to be in. Um, and there's, uh, you know, it's definitely a way to make a really good living. Uh, How's your job security been? You've been in the machine tool trade for how long? I, I've never not had a job. So I've been in the trade since 2002 and never once have I not had a job. I've, I've worked for three different companies, Allied for 10 years. I've worked here for eight years and I worked for a company called Avaline down in Warsaw for three years. Mm -hmm. Even through COVID, I've never not had a job. Really yeah, I, I have to say that the manufacturing industry, not only in the Michiana region, but across the country, manufacturing has not slowed down through the pandemic. I know many industries uh, suffered, uh, you know, with regard to that. But in, manu in, in our industry, we continue to make things. I mean, we continue to uh, create and be innovative. And so there, there is no company out there the, um, that isn't hiring um, and is willing to have you earn while you learn and to support your training, your certification, your education uh, while you have a, a good paying job and while you have that job security. And um, so I can attest for that for many of the companies that are around this area uh, that we network with. So not just Mac Tool, uh, but I'd have to say probably pretty much every manufacturing company uh, in the area. And we have good educators in the area. We have good online resources to help with that. Um, many companies have their own internal training resources. And so uh, we're not at a loss to help people improve their skill set and uh, and continue on their education and become a viable contributor to companies uh, such as Matt Tool. Um, can any of you on the team can attest, you know, why a student may want to consider a job in this career other than what I've talked about? Uh, if you're a person that likes math, sciences, um, likes a challenge, uh, likes working with their hands, uh, likes working with other people in a team environment, um, would like probably a lifelong job security. Uh, for, uh, you know, it's a lot of good positive things. Uh, you know, a lot of, you know, way back when every manufacturer considered dark and dirty and all that, that's all way, way gone the last 20 years um, uh, for what we have. Uh, nice, clean environments. Um, High tech, modern. Yes. High tech, modern computers. Uh, people don't run machines anymore. The machines run all by themselves. You know, we program the machines. Uh, we control the processes that the machines run. We control the inputs of the machine. Um, but nobody's, I've got a couple of manual mills here that, you know, a couple guys know how to use to do some manual things. Really, you know, we make product on CNC machines and we really don't pay people to run machines anymore, even though you know, that's what we do to make a living is the machines running. You know, it's all about the programming, controlling the inputs, um, controlling the process, um, continuous improvement, uh, do the job today better than you did yesterday and even better tomorrow uh, type mentality. So um, how many team members do you have there at Mac Tool? Uh, 30. Uh, we've 30. been as many as uh, 70. Uh, we, you know, did a lot of made a lot of commercial airline parts. The commercial airline industry has not recovered from COVID. Uh, luckily, uh, we're doing a lot of military programs right now and still doing a lot of medical work. Uh, but, you know, we did lose a lot of business because of COVID because people are not flying. And once they're flying again, uh, they're not flying in the numbers they did. Uh, yeah. So 
Uh, we'll someday that will come back. But no, oh yeah, it will come back. Right. Wonderful. So if I can add to that, I just want to say that this place is fun. I have, so I'm a business manager, right? I have worked in a few different industries um, and with all kinds of people, but you know, I get to come to work in jeans and tennis shoes and uh, hang out with people that make cool stuff and be like, hey, you see that space rocket that's going up in the air? That's got parts we made on it, mm -hmm. right? Uh, it's, it's fun. And there's not a lot of industries where you can be like, we do cool stuff, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and I am super happy that I got to meet Paul and the guys and, and start working here at Mac. I, the only thing I can say is I wish I'd done it sooner. Uh, I wasted a lot of time in boring jobs, uh, <laughs> sitting at a desk running data, right? Um, and I kind of almost did the same thing here, but it's just, it's better here. It's way more fun. Yeah. Well, that's a, that's a great testament to, uh, to the team and to the company. So I appreciate you saying that because, you know, when you're considering a career path, you have to enjoy not only what you do, but who you do it for and your work environment. So that's something to take into consideration. And I'd encourage all the students. That's why maybe internships, uh, you know, maybe a good viable opportunity, um, you know, just to have the exposure, you know, gather a group together and, you know, and ask for a tour, um, you know, or just maybe, you know, some sort of mentor opportunity. So uh, there's lots of resources available. And again, if you check out the landing page for manufacturing days, uh, there's a lot of resources there that can direct you accordingly. So, um, but uh, Paul, also too, I, I recall you saying earlier about, you know, the machines not running themselves or they're running themselves anymore. So I do know that the evolution of technology um, and machinery has really accelerated the innovation of parts that we can produce nowadays. And it requires a different skill set. So I'm just wondering, you know, maybe your Dan and Johnny can chime in in here. Um, where do you see kind of the industry going? What, what, how can you see uh, jobs changing or what kind of future career opportunities may be available that we haven't even thought of yet? Um, it's going to require a more technical person, a more rounded person. Um, uh, you know, the computers, the programming, the problem solving, lean manufacturing, all those things. You're just not an employee that shows up and basically cranks handles on a machine. Um, you know, they're starting to do more additive manufacturing, which is just a, it's a different type of machine to make a part in a different way. Uh, and that's really the, the, the aerospace and medical industry is still just at the beginning of that, uh, evolution of, you know, what will change things. Um, so usually when people worry about technology, they always think of it in terms of it's going to eliminate jobs when really what it does is it. Uh, it does require fewer people, but the people it does require, it takes some better skill set out of those people, which is good for the individual because that means you're worth more to the company and you will be compensated more. So uh, it's not a bad thing for the people that make the cut, and, you know, can uh, do the more technical jobs. Yeah. Good, good computer skills, basic computer skills are very important and uh, communication is very important in our trade. Yeah. Uh, you have to know how to use a spreadsheet. Uh, you have to be able to put together a Word document, a PowerPoint display, uh, because regardless of what you're doing here, communicating well with others is a, a priority. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, I don't know if we have any closing uh, remarks or if Kate wants to chime back in, if we've had any other Q&A. Um, I know we kind of ran over here a little bit because we got a late start with our technical difficulties. But again, I just appreciate the opportunity for all of us to get together and uh, um, chat a little bit and hopefully uh, some students that were joining us are kind of inspired or at least curious uh, to learn more. Uh, anybody um, interested can uh, contact Mickey at Mac Tool. Yeah. For nice different plug. opportunities thank you. going different directions. Absolutely. A perfect sign off. And thanks to Kelly for moderating this conversation and um, to Paul and Mickey and Johnny and Dan for being a part of this. It was great. And, um, and especially the dog in the background that I did hear a couple of times. So that was nice. Thanks, Kelly. That's Kelly's. We appreciate that. That makes it a great place to be. Yeah. Right. It's my Whether dog. you're at home or at work. I thought it was the work dog. No, it wasn't the work dogs. <laughs> there you go. We had a problem. They got, uh, they got stunk last week. So we had a little technical difficulty with the dogs. Uh-oh. Oh, yikes. <laughs>
Well, everybody go forth and enjoy this beautiful day. And thanks again for being here. Thank you, thanks, everyone. Thanks. thanks.